In this video, we're going to be discussing the properties of parallelograms. So a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral, and I know this sounds strange, but depending what state you live in and what curriculum your state follows, some states also consider a parallelogram to be a type of trapezoid. Uh, that's because a trapezoid is sometimes defined as a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides, um, and those sides being opposite, and that is true for a parallelogram. Since we are considering a parallelogram to be a quadrilateral and a trapezoid, that means it inherits all of their properties. In addition, parallelograms have some new properties. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. You can see that marked in the diagram here. Opposite sides are congruent. The opposite angles are congruent to each other. So here's what that looks like in the diagram. And the last one is that the diagonals bisect each other. So if I zoom in on this picture here and I draw in the diagonals, if something is bisected, it is split into two congruent parts. So the first diagonal is split into two congruent parts. The second diagonal is split into two congruent parts. Um, and in a regular parallelogram like this, the diagonals are not congruent. So it's not all four of these small parts are congruent. It's two from the first diagonal and two from the second diagonal. All right, so let's use all these properties to answer some questions on parallelograms. Number one, true or false, every parallelogram has two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent and parallel. That is true. That matches the properties we just talked about. Number two, true or false, every parallelogram has diagonals that are congruent that is going to be false. We just looked at that in the picture. The diagonals are not congruent. All right, let's look at some problems with numbers here. So number three, find the perimeter of the parallelogram shown below. Well, opposite sides are equal to one another or congruent. So I know that these missing sides are seven and 12. And I'm going to just add up 12, seven, 12, and seven. And I get that my perimeter is 38. Number four, in parallelogram ABCD, if the measure of angle A is 99, I'm going to fill that in, angle B is 81, find the measure of angle C and angle D. Well, we said before that in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent, so C must be 99 and D must be 81. This also fits the trapezoid property that same side interior angles are supplementary. For instance, these two are same side interior angles and they are supplementary here, meaning they add up to 180. Okay, number five. In parallelogram ABCD, if AD is five, I'm gonna label as I read this here, DC is 12 and AE is four, we wanna find the perimeter of triangle ABC. So I'm just gonna highlight what we're trying to actually find the perimeter of. And when I look at that, I'm missing a lot of information, but I can quickly fill in some stuff. I know that BC is 5 because AD is 5, and those are opposite sides. I know AB is 12 by the same rule. And we learned the rule that in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So if AE is 4, EC is 4 as well. So when I'm finding the perimeter, I'm going to add up 12, 5, and eight, or we could put it at four and four, however you choose to write it there. And I'm going to get 25 or 25 units. Number six, in parallelogram math, find measure of angle M if M is 2X minus 10 and H is 2X plus 30. Well, these angles are supplementary to one another. So 2X minus 10 plus 2X plus 30 equals 180. Combine like terms. I'm going to subtract the 20 to the other side, trying to isolate our variable here, and then divide by 4, and I have x is 40. We were looking for the measure of angle m, so I'm going to plug in here 2 times 40 minus 10, and I get that the measure of angle m is 70 degrees. Okay, number seven, given the parallelogram shown below, find the perimeter. All right, well, we know that opposite sides are congruent, so I know that 4x minus 17 and 2x minus 1 are going to be equal to one another. So I'm going to 
get the variables together on one side. And I'm going to get the numbers together on one side. Okay, basically the, the constants together. I get 2x is 16 and x is 8. All right, so if I plug that into either of those sides here, I'm going to get that each of these sides is 15. Again, I'm getting that by plugging in 8 for x. So 2 times 8 is 16 minus 1 gives us 15. Or on the left side, 4 times 8 is 32 minus 17 will give us 15 as well. Now I have to work with the top and bottom of this parallelogram. That top side is 8x minus 22. Well, x is 8. We already found that. So if I plug 8 in there, I'm going to get 8 times 8 is 64 minus 22. And that's going to be 42 then. And that means this bottom piece is also 42 because we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So to find our perimeter, I'm going to add up 15, 42, 15, and 42. Okay, so I'm going to write that all in here. And it looks like our perimeter of this parallelogram is 114 units. Okay, number eight. Given parallelogram ABCD, if AC is 8x minus 4, since there's a line going through AC, I'm going to just make this bracket here so it's clear that I'm labeling all of it. And we know AE is 3x plus 2. We're going to solve for x. Okay, well, remember that the diagonals bisect each other. So if AE is 3x plus 2, EC must also be 3x plus 2. And if we know the sum is 8x minus 4, based on this picture alone, we could do 3x plus 2 plus 3x plus 2 equals 8x minus 4. Let's combine our like terms. And we're going to try and isolate our variable. So let's move the x to the other side by subtracting 6x on both sides. I'm going to add the 4 to the other side. And I get that x is 4. Remember, whenever you're solving an equation and you are looking for x, you can always check your answer by plugging x back into the equation, making sure both sides are equal. All right, for our last question, we are given a coordinate proof. So we're given the four vertices of quadrilateral MATH, and we have to prove that this is a parallelogram. So I'm going to start by plotting this, even if the question... Um, says that it's optional to plot. I always find it helpful to plot the picture, so that is a recommendation. And I'll talk about why I find that helpful in just a second. And we're going to make nice straight lines connecting our four points. Okay. When you plot each point, make sure you put the letter of the vertice next to it. So next to point M, make sure there's an M there. And I noticed that my A looks off there, so I'm going to just readjust. There we go. All right. Now if we take a look at our parallelogram here, we have a couple of different ways we could prove that this is a parallelogram. Um, so there's multiple correct methods. I'm going to just showcase one of them in this video. But I can tell that MA and HT should be congruent to one another. That's because they're opposite sides, and this has to be a parallelogram. The problem is not asking us, it's asking us if it's a parallelogram. It's basically telling us it is, and we just need to verify it. I also know MH and AT should be congruent to one another. So if I do my math correctly, MA and HT should be the same length. MH and AT should be the same length. So in order to show length, um, what I'm going to do is use the distance formula. So I'm going to find the length of MA. Distance formula is the change in X value squared plus the change in Y value squared and all of that under a big radical. Another alternative to using the distance formula is drawing some right triangles on your graph and doing Pythagorean theorem. All right, so if I plug in here for MA, the change in the X values is 9. 
If you were writing negative nine, that's okay. It just depends which one you consider x1, x2, and it doesn't actually make a difference in these problems because we'll be squaring anyway. When I subtract the y values, I get three. So if I simplify this, let's just work inside the radical. I have nine squared and three squared. That's gonna give me 81 plus nine, and this is gonna come out to be radical 90. All right, let's find the next length, so AT. When I subtract the x's, I get negative three. When I subtract the y's, I get negative five. When I simplify this, negative three squared is nine. Negative five squared is 25. Remember, those are positives. Negative times a negative is a positive. And nine plus 25 is gonna give me 34. All right, before I find TH, let's just go back to the picture here. TH, that's our bottom side here, and MA we said should be congruent to one another. So if we're doing our math correctly, we already know MA is radical 90. TH should come out to be the same thing. Okay, I'm going to move this calculator out of the way here. All right, so let's see what happens when we find TH. When I subtract the X values, I get negative 9. When I subtract the Y values, I get negative 3. And sure enough, that will give me radical 90. Let's do our last side here. So our last side is going to be HM, which we said should be congruent to AT. So for HM, when I subtract the X's, I am going to get uh, three. When I subtract the Y's, I get five and I get radical 34. So notice how our opposite sides are congruent and we basically proved that, we verified it through a calculation. To wrap up a coordinate proof though, we need to write a sentence. So I'm gonna say quadrilateral MATH is a parallelogram because, kind of like start out by restating the question. And after the word because, you're gonna talk about, well, what work did we show? We showed that opposite sides are congruent. Remember what I said before, this is just one way to do this proof. You could have also shown opposite sides are parallel and found their slopes. That would be another option. You could show the diagonals bisect each other using the midpoint formula. So there are different options. I personally choose to do my coordinate proofs with the distance formula whenever possible. Hopefully this video helped you understand about parallelograms. The rest of the videos in this playlist will cover the other quadrilaterals and their properties.